Welcome to this video showing the new features of Revit 2024. This video will concentrate on the core features across the Revit platform and also those targeted at architecture. There's been many new features in the 2024 release and this video will highlight some of the main ones. The first enhancement we'll look at is the updates to the dark theme for the user interface. So we can see that we have slightly cleaned up icons here it does look a little bit more modern and we're currently looking at the light themed interface that we're used to in Revit. And we're often asked if we can change the interface to be a darker color as when you're looking at it for a long period of time it can be a bit glaring. So now in this release if we go under the file menu here and into the options looking at the colors tab we can see we've got a, an active theme for the user interface here and we can swap it to dark. This then changes the canvas as well, although we can change this back separately. And we can see we've got access into the colors for all of the different areas of the canvas. I'll click OK. And we can see now that the interface has changed to the dark theme. We keep the same icons, although they work nicely with the darker theme now. And we can see that it goes right through the project browser and the properties palette. And we can see the change to the canvas as well, so the drawing window. So we now have that reversed, showing a black background with all of the line work in white. And we can see that that works reasonably well. We still have the colors for things like reference planes and section markers showing up. We can see it certainly reduces the glare. I think it's quite quick to get used to using the interface in this dark theme. Personally, I'm not overly keen on a dark canvas, but we can change that by going to the view ribbon tab here. And we just have the canvas theme button, which just toggles between the light and the dark canvas theme. And for me, I think this would be the preferred combination of having the darker interface, but the light, the white canvas theme still, so that we can still see the difference between the line weights. And this is really going to be the preview of the drawings when they print. And looking at it with the dark themed interface will certainly make it a bit easier on the eyes when working for long periods of time. So the next feature we'll look at is the search functionality for the project browser. Now, although we've been able to search the project browser for some time, to do that, we would have to right click over the project browser, choose search from the menu, and then in the search box that appeared, we'd type in the search term and then click next to cycle through the different options in the project browser. So now in 2024, we have a search box which is live at the top of the project browser. And all we need to do is click in, and as we start to type, we can see that the letters that we've typed, even if it's just one or two letters, are instantly highlighted and the project browser itself is filtered so that we can only see those objects that contain those letters. We can see that it looks not only through views, but also schedules and sheets and also families. And once we find what we're looking for, we can just click on and then double click to open that view. The browser will stay filtered until we clear the search bar at the top here at which point we'll see the entire project browser come back. So that's a simple addition, but we can see that that will make searching through project browsers that have got lots of views and sheets and schedules in them much, much quicker, and it will make it much easier to find the views that we're looking for. The next feature we'll have a look at in Revit 2024 is the ability to add multiple views to a sheet. Looking in the project browser, I have a sheet here for a room layout and I'll open this view up and we can see that this is a blank A3 sheet. Now I've already created several views, plans and elevations for the room that I need. So I'm going to use the search function here to search for the MD room. And I can see the floor plan and also the four elevations and just holding down the control key I can select all of those. And now I just simply drag them out onto the sheet as normal but we're going to drag all of the views. And we can see now attached to our cursor are the plan and all four elevations. And they're all tiled and separated. And they just about fit on the sheet, although maybe not perfectly aligned. So we can click to place those. We can see the schedule now, which is filtered by the sheet, shows the objects that we've got on the views here. And it's not done a bad job of placing them. We may need to manipulate the positions, but we can do that quite easily afterwards just by shifting and moving things around to suit.
We've also got some extended functionality which first appeared in 2023 in the 0.1 release. So if I clear the search term here, and I'll duplicate this sheet. So we'll just right click over the project browser here and I'll just duplicate it with detailing. And this way we get the furniture schedule duplicated as well. And we've got a copy of that sheet now. I can go back to the other view. And there are several ways that we can do this. One of the easiest ways is to select a couple of the views here. And now from the right click menu, we can just move aligned to sheet. And now I can pick the copy of the sheet here and click OK. And we can see they disappear from this sheet and then they appear in the exact same location on the other sheet. And of course, well, now we can reorganize these and start to make the sheet as we need them. We can also drag and drop between the views as well. So we can also just select these views in the project browser here and drag them up onto another sheet. And we can see those views appear on that original sheet that we just dragged them onto. And as they're in the location of the other sheet, I'll just select this one and move it into its original location. Now we are also able to add multiple views to the sheet via the place view tool on the ribbon tab. So I'll swap back to the copied sheet that we have, which is now blank and has no views on there. And from the view ribbon tab, We'll click the place view tool. And now we can see the list of all of the views in the project. So I'll filter this out to look for the kitchen views. And we can see those views there. So I'll select the two elevations, just holding down the control key and click OK. And again, we can see those two views that are attached to our cursor and we can just place those onto the sheet. And then we'll just move this one across so that it fits a little bit better onto our drawing sheet. So I think that feature is going to be quite valuable. We often need to assemble multiple views onto drawings and rather than dragging and dropping one at a time, we can select the, all of the views required for that sheet. And even if that's a mix of schedules, plans, elevations and legend views, we can drag them all out in one go and then we just need to organize them on the drawing sheet. And that's going to save us quite a bit of time when we're setting up lots of sheets. The next feature we're going to look at is the new color book feature. So wherever we get to choose a color from in Revit, we used to have the option of the standard colors, the RGB and HSV colors, or we had the Pantone color browser. Whereas now in 2024, we have various color books to choose from. So to show this, I'll go to the manage ribbon tab and then we'll open up the materials browser. And now if I click on to change a color, we can see we have the standard color picker that we've had there in Revit for quite some time. But rather than to have just Pantone as an option down here, we now have color books. And if we click on, we can see now that we've got a different set of colors here and it's currently set to Pantone solid coated. And in the drop down list here, we can see we have various different color books, including RAL colors as well. And we can just swap between these now. And then looking through, we can see the different colors and as we pick on, we can see their RGB value as well. So once we've got one of these chosen, we can just click OK. And we can see now that that's the color that we've assigned into this material. So the color books gives us a lot more options than just the Pantone colors that we're used to. And the inclusion of RAL colors is something that we've been asking for for quite some time. The next feature we'll look at is the new textures shaded mode for views. Currently, the view we're looking at is in shaded mode. And zooming in a little, we can see that we've got colors with the surface hatch patterns as we would expect to see in a shaded mode view. In earlier releases, if we wanted to preview the actual textures, the only shading option we had was realistic. This could be quite heavy on the graphics card and be quite slow to work with, although it has been improved in recent times. But now in 2024, we have the new textures option. So we can enable this from the view control bar at the bottom here. And now it uses the same shaded mode for lighting. However, it now displays the render textures where they've been applied onto objects here. So to show where this texture comes from, if I go to the materials browser, and we can see the brick common material here that we've got applied to this panel. If we look at the appearance tab here, which is where the rendering comes from, 
we can see that we have this texture and this is what we're seeing displayed in the actual viewport here on the objects. So this gives us a nice fast shaded mode, but still displaying the textures that we can work with. And I think this would be quite useful in elevations as well. So where we want to actually indicate the materials that we'll be applying onto elevations, rather than use the realistic mode, we can apply the texture shading. And now our 2D elevations will also use those same textures. And I think when we've got several views tiled upon a sheet with the textures displayed, we're going to have improved performance and make it a lot more user friendly. The next feature we'll look at in Revit 2024 is the enhancements to the coordination models. On the Insert Ribbon tab, we've had the option for a coordination model for quite some time. And this has been to link in a Navisworks file, either an NWD or an NWC, that we can then see in the model and we can coordinate with that. And it allows us to link lots of different file formats via Navisworks. And they're also quite lightweight files, so we can deal with much bigger models without slowing Revit down. Well, now we have two options. In 2024, we can link a coordination model direct from Autodesk Docs. And if we choose this, it will open up a browser that's looking at our Autodesk Docs account. And here we can see that we have access into all of the projects in our account that we're invited into. And in this project, we can see we have the folders beneath that, so we can browse through the project to find the models that we're looking for. And here we can see we have three different files here. So we have a Revit model, which was created actually in an earlier version of Revit. And we could link this in as a coordination model without having to upgrade it. And we also have some different file formats. And we're actually able to link in all of the 3D model formats that Autodesk Docs can actually view. So that gives us access to quite a lot of file types, whether they're from other packages such as Autodesk's Inventor or Formit, or equally from other software such as SolidWorks, Rhino, SketchUp, as well as a lot of generic file formats such as OBJ, IGIS, STL. And it really opens up the possibility for collaborating with consultants that are using specialist software that can't easily be brought into Revit. So if I select the Revit file that we have here, we can see that we get the preview of the model. We can obviously examine that to make sure that's the file that we're looking for. I'll click back and we'll choose an FBX file. We can see we get the preview of this model as well. Although we don't see any textures in any of these files, regardless of their format. So we can only really see the shading that's been applied to the models here. And hence it all looks quite dark for this FBX file. We can see we have the option here to link via internal origin or shared coordinates. And what I do is I'll actually link in the Revit file. So I'll click back and then choose the Revit model once more. And we can see the positioning is set to be shared coordinates. So I'll click link and it just takes a second or two. And then that's loaded in to our current project. And zooming out here, we can see that it's positioned relative to the shared coordinates with these two files. I'll go to the 3D view. And there we can see the model sat on the site next to our actual live model here. We can see that it's just one complete coordination model and it's pinned in place. So if needed, we can unpin that and move it into the correct location if it's not quite right. And it's now visible in all of the views. So we've seen it in the plan. And now if I open up one of the elevation views, we can see that in elevation as well. It always appears shaded. So even though the view is set to be hidden line, we're always going to see the shaded model. We can also snap to the model as well. So if I come and choose the measure between references tool here, and then as we go over the coordination model, we can see those snap points enabled, allowing us to measure accurately. And in the plan view, we have the same snap points. So if we needed to draw a wall or draw any other objects, we could still snap to the coordination model. Now, zooming in a little bit, if I use the tab key on the keyboard, you'll see that we can actually select the individual objects inside the coordination model. So if I pick on the door just here, and now looking at the properties palette, we can see that it is the coordination model. However, I can see the properties of the door that I have selected within that model. That's the same for all of the objects that we have in this coordination model. 
So once again, I can tab through and select something like the roof and again, see all of its properties here. So having access to coordination models direct from Autodesk Docs will make it easier for us to work with different file formats and collaborate with specialist consultants that are using different software that can't always easily produce models that are compatible with Revit.